could you explain that more where so most thoughts that come through there's a story of an eye so how is that all a lie and how are we not the body or the mind let me put it another way to you why is the onus on me to prove something that doesn't exist as in prove something doesn't exist right like what can you prove to me how the eye exists because you're the one making the fantasy up about it. It's like, yeah. prove to me Tinkerbell's real. <laughs> Why should I have to prove to you Tinkerbell's not real? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying, right? Mm. Like, you know, Peter Pan. Prove to me Peter Pan's real. It's, it's the same thing. Everyone's asking me, which is, I get it, it's a role, but I'm just trying to flip it for a moment. Why, why would I sit here telling you, trying to explain to you why Peter Pan's not real? Makes no sense, right? Mm. <laughs> but I'll explain it anyway. That's what... <laughs> we just have to do a simple experiment. As far as thoughts go, what's your next thought, do you know? No. All right. Well, where's your hand? Yeah. Right, so you've got that, you can see the hand, okay, so but you don't know where the thoughts come and go from mm. or what your next one is. Where do your thoughts come from? Don't know. Where do they go to? I don't know. Uh -huh. But your hand's still here? Yeah. Okay. So you know that? I know. Right. <laughs> so we could say the mind is... something we don't understand. Scientists don't even know where the mind comes and goes from. Have you ever had the experience where you, you've, you're you hearing voices that don't sound like yours in your head? Yeah. Okay, well, that's a bit weird. You know, what the hell is that? Sometimes they're chattering away and from then you catch me on, hang on, this doesn't make sense. Well, neither does your voice. Just because something sounds like you doesn't mean it's not the same as the other ones. Right? You're not them. It's got nothing to do with you. You just consider it a radio station in a, down the hall. And that's what happens as you get quieter and quieter and quieter. Instead of it being this omnipresent noise telling you everything and being mean to you and discussing this and working at how you're going to be better and faster and bigger, all that other crap, you know, it'll start to back off and it'll seem like it's in the next room at some point. It'll just get quieter and quieter. And then there's a deep peace that's left behind that you are. Right. So, as far as the body goes, I mean, it, all right. So, if there's an eye, what part of the body is it in? Because people lose their arms, they lose their legs, they lose their heads. There's heart transplant. Well, they don't lose their heads; they die when they lose heads. There's heart transplants, right? So, somebody dies, and the heart goes into another person. Is that now the other person? Now this person? No. no. Right. So then you could say, okay, well. It's not there. Is it in the arm? No, people lose their arms. In the legs? No, they lose their legs. Okay. So the only thing left it really is, okay, it's in the brain or the mind. I'm in the brain or the mind. I'm that. Okay, well, what's that? Where do all your thoughts come from? They come from your patterning and your history and, your, and the language you got taught. Right? So, so we're, we're left with thoughts as far as an eye goes. So there's, 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 there's something here, and I'm not debating that. What I'm debating is that, that it's a separate entity from everything else. It's, it's, it's disconnected. Mm -hmm. It's something in nature. It's something in the world. Whereas really there's no evidence for that other than a thought which we don't even know where it comes from or goes to. That, that changes as we age. And we hear alien or other voices sometimes. That's the only evidence is that there's an I thought. So outside of that I thought, what evidence do we have? Yeah, none. It actually seems really obvious when you put it like that. We have zero evidence. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Try to you want me to explain why Peter Pan doesn't exist? <laughs> there's first there's, there's no evidence to begin with. 
except for an I thought, but people consider that evidence, including scientists. <laughs> it's mass hypnosis, it's a mass illusion. Yeah, that's what's quite crazy is that there's actually no evidence, but the masses are believing. Yeah, the breadth of the uh, illusion is staggering. Yeah. Staggering. And it's so simply taken apart. It's quite a miracle, really. If there's a miracle, that's the miracle. Everyone thinks they're separate. Their evidence of thoughts, because they're attached to thoughts, it's therefore true. Because they can see something over there, but every experience you have is coming from within you. I see you here. I don't see you there. I mean, you're there, but I'm seeing, my experience of it is here. Taste is here. Touch is here. Uh, even the wind, whatever it is, it's, it's all here. It's, a, it's just unity. It's oneness. The, you know, even in, the, in all of humanity, if that uh, science thing was accurate, is if all of humanity, if all the space was taken out of humanity and it was just what is matter left, it would be the size of a cube, an ice cube. Right? That's how much space, everything, everything's space. It's, mm -hmm. the, the, the Buddha called it emptiness. Everything's emptiness. <laughs> it's all emptiness and our minds congeal so much of that space into objects and then we suffer from the objects but we're, we're pulling that in it's like a spider pulling its web in putting it out and putting it in this is you know, like a machine to, to configure energy into something trans, uh, translatable and movable through Not exactly, but like that. And you're not the awareness. So if the body mind dies, awareness doesn't. So, and that's an interesting one. People have trouble with that a little bit, but here's how you can understand that. And who was I speaking to today? Yeah, Amy, a little bit. There's three states of being or consciousness, right? Deep sleep, no dreaming, dreaming. And waking, or waking dream, sleeping dream, waking dream. There's the three states. None of them are real either. Ultimately, they're relatively real. But when you're deep in your dream at night, right, you're so convinced that dream's real, right? And you wake in the morning and it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But what evidence can we even have that that's not the real thing? And this isn't a dream as well. And it's just dream to dream. This just seems to be a more permanent dream. Right? Well, there's no evidence. It's very tricky. So we have the sleeping dream, the waking dream, then we have the deep, deep sleep, right? None of those are actually real. They're just states of consciousness or states of, of movement. Right? But there's something behind all three of them. That's what we are. And when you go in deep in the mind, quiets and everything, that becomes experienceable. So you can be asleep, but it's the body and the mind are asleep, but there's something else that's still awake. There's something still there. And it's not suffering going, oh my God, when's he going to wake up? It's not like that. It's just this omnipresent now. It's just um, with no thought or anything. So it's no suffering. And it's, no, it's beautiful. It's, it's a lovely, lovely, gorgeous experience. But it's the same thing that's in the background now as well while having this conversation in the waking dream. Awareness. It's not reliant on the body-mind. It's prior to that. So to me, the I, I is like Tinkerbell or Peter Pan. But everyone knows Peter, Pell, Peter Pan and Tinkerbell are, 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 are figments. Everyone thinks the eye's real. It is a convincing trick, though. It's bloody clever. Very sophisticated. Wow. Sophistication doesn't make things true, right? Yeah. 
So, you know, the simpler you can make things and the, 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 the less and less blocks you've got into things and the more you strip things back, the more obvious things become. We get tangled up in slicing things into little bits and we can't see anything. It's like the, the, the thousand bits of dirt on the, on the visor. Stripped off is just one thing. It almost <clears throat> feels relieving to know that it's not true. You know, like um, yeah, it's freedom. It's yeah, freedom. it feels like freedom. It, it's freedom. It's the doorway to freedom. Yeah, it's the only door to freedom. It's knowing what you are. Everything else is a Peter Pan imagining he's doing something. Like Peter Pan thinks he's real, and he's going through his cartoon thinking he's real. It's not real. So if you're identified and going through the world and trying to manipulate the world, it's like uh, it's illusionary. You must know who you are to have a real life, what you are beyond mind body. But as I say, I'm always explaining why we're not. Explain to me why we are. <laughs> How does that work? You know, because we experience something and see something and, uh, and we have tactile senses and all these things, that's not evidence. That's evidence of an experience of awareness. That's evidence of awareness operating through a sensory vehicle. And our senses have greatly distracted us. If we had shut them all off and just be there deadly silent and still, we would see right away. 